This time on shift points, we get this 55 Ford wagon back in the floor with an S10 front clip in it. Thanks for joining. Parking outside. Started this project. Found a piece of brass. He's gonna take. <laughs> All right, everyone. We are back. Officially back. Um, we are gonna work on getting this thing boxed up and plated and get it mm, welded all together today is kind of the hope. Uh, Dad went up this morning, picked us up some eighth-inch uh, cold roll drops uh, from B&H Sheet Metal. We get all their all of our metal from there, basically. So anyway, up in Asheville, he went up there and got that stuff. So let me talk you through the plan a little bit on what we're gonna do here. He thought about it and he came up with the idea last night. What we're gonna do? We're gonna make a plate. We're gonna take that eighth-inch stuff. And we're gonna make a plate that's the width of the whole frame here, this whole section, and the height of the frame here. And run that across and that's going to be kind of the base of everything that'll get it that'll get welded and cap off this end it'll cap off this end and then that's going to be the base of everything we're going to do uh, his plan is to put probably three triangulated gussets here on both sides of this and then we're going to come and plate that and come across those gussets into this all the way as far up as we can into this um, and that's kind of the plan go back here do that on all uh, top bottom uh, yeah, top, both sides. That's going to be the main structure. I'm going to do that on both sides. So that's kind of the plan. So I'm going to get started on cutting out those main um, those main rectangles. That'll be used to cap off both ends of the frame. And then, like I said, will be the basis of all of this uh, structure that we're going to build. So I'm going to go ahead and get on to that and see if we can get this thing done today if possible. <laughs> Officially into the board. The plates and the frames have both been welded up on both sides completely all the way around. I did all that. You guys got to see a bunch of it. But you can see those are on both sides, all the way around the perimeter of this frame and this frame, they're welded up to that plate there, that big eighth inch plate. So that's got us got us going there. It looks really good. Now we're starting to discuss what we're going to do about the gussets and how we're going to stiffen this up real good. Okay, good morning, we're back. So we got the front end welded into this thing uh, yesterday. You guys got to see all of that, of course. Um, and what we're going to do now is start working on bracing everything, getting everything plated, get this thing strong how it needs to be. You guys saw us talking about that and getting ready for it in the last video last week. Um, one thing that we had to be cautious of whenever we were uh, putting this up or putting this front end onto it, we uh, got to thinking about it and wanted to double check the tire clearance on this. So we have this stock set of tires that came on the S10 front clip when it came here. Of course, these wheels and tires are going to have to change because of the change in track width. He's going to have to do something with the off or with the back spacing and offset, and he'll have to figure all that stuff out as far as that goes. But with the stock set of wheels and tires on this thing, you can see here that we do have clearance. You got about an inch of clearance or so, um, how it is set up right now. And this is the same on that side. Also, we had it on both sides to check it. It's going to change how we were going to structure this. We we're going to put some gussets in here and kind of brace it. But what we're going to do is just use a flat plate and make it come out here, make it like S shaped down this down this and down that and then weld that plate in there to give it some extra structure but we'll still have clearance and this is with the front suspension at full um, at full extension so when it goes up this is actually going to come further out a little of course this is on a little bit of an arc so this is going to come out a little bit once the car puts weight on it and it gets uh, the, su the suspension compressed some this will come out and give a little bit more clearance but it was something to think about when we were, uh, uh, something we wanted to double check now that we had everything <laughs> everything put in. I don't know what we would have done about it at this point. Um, 
But we did get plenty of clearance on it and we'll, it'll be able to continue on. We'll go ahead and get this thing structured up. So especially now that we can't put the gussets in here uh, because of the clearance on the wheel and tire and stuff, we were already gonna do this, but it kind of makes these more important. So I got these cut out. These gussets are gonna live somewhere right in here. And they'll have to get fit a little better. Uh, they'll fit here and we're gonna use those as kind of a, a cap on the top and bottom of this. And then the plate, cap it on the bottom of the top of this like that. Plate will run the length of this triangle and we'll cut this off and it's gonna run up here onto the S10 frame. So there'll be a plate that runs from here back and then back like this onto that. And we'll have to cut this off and make another plate to kind of cap all that off. So that's gonna add some structure in here. We'll do that same thing on both sides and that'll have that fixed up. Then with the plate on the side and a S plate here on the bottom as well, it's gonna make this very, very rigid and it should do way more than enough to keep this thing attached. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick here is how we, uh, once we made sure we had our wheelbase right, you guys saw us, we got our line here in the floor. We talked about this a whole lot in the first video about making sure that this was running parallel that the front end and the rear end was running parallel and that was really important. We spent a lot of time marking the floor and kind of getting some lines projected to make sure that we could do that. So how we were able to double check ourselves after we got the wheelbase set, we used the lower ball joint as our, um, as our reference point. And you saw us back here, we marked, uh, the, we marked on the floor the dot that shows the exact dead center of the axle of the rear axle itself. So I went to, believe it or not, I went to engineering school for four years and probably the most important thing I learned in math, I learned in eighth grade, which was Pythagorean's theorem, is to do with right triangles. And with that, we were able to gut check ourselves and make sure that what we had was right. Let me show you how we did that. So if we're looking at the side of the car here, you can see that uh, because we know what our wheelbase was and we made sure that we got it set. So right here is the beginning of the center of the axle. We know this length right here is 115 and a half inches. Then we know that this distance from the floor up to the lower ball joint is 21 inches. So we have two sides of a right triangle, right? So now we can get this distance here measured from that point to the ball joint, giving us the hypotenuse of the triangle. So basically what it'll end up being is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we do some math here on the screen here real quick, you'll see that whenever we go through that, it comes out to 117.3 is what this distance from here in the floor to the lower ball joint should be. So let's pull the tape measure and see if that's what we actually end up with. So since there's just two of us, <laughs> we're having to kind of improvise a little. We run the tape measure out, we run it back to the dot and got it held and then dad fixed it here on this side, here on the lower ball joint. And that's the measure that I'm gonna show you, just so you know we're not kind of fudging this. So you can look right in here, see if I can get in there. You can see to the lower ball joint, see if I can get a little light here. To the top of the lower ball joint there, if I can get it to focus, is just over 117 and a quarter inches. So you can tell, again, now you know there is some distance that the tape measure is having to travel from the dot over to the lower ball joint. So there's a little bit of fudge in the numbers themselves, but that being just over 117 and a quarter tells us that we've got this wheelbase as close as we can get it. And if we did it on the other side, which we did, it ends up being exactly the same. So we've got this thing very square in the car. We know it should track very straight whenever it goes down the road, which is our main goal here on top of it being safe, make sure it stays structured well. So that's really important and we're really happy it landed this well. We made a first decision on what we're going to do on the gussets back here. Um, 
One of them we're gonna run back here on the top, run up here on the top, kind of like this, run it downhill, and then I've got another one made down here for the bottom that's gonna sit like this, also kind of running down uphill. So that's gonna stiffen this in two spots, and then that'll give us a surface. We can come off of this straight back and down those gussets, and it'll widen back here and then attach to the Ford frame, and that should really stiffen this whole section up. So as we've told you guys before, having uh, having cardboard can really save you a lot of wasted material. So Dad took a piece here. This is gonna be what this plate on this side looks like because we talked about earlier, we can't put any gussets in here because it'll get into the tire. So that's what that's gonna eventually look like. We'll take this corner off, of course. And his plan is, uh, like we did on the um, 37 when it was in here, to cut an angle on these, a slope on it. So it's not just straight weld, it'll give you some more surface area to weld to, and he'll do that on both sides over there. So that's what this plate here on the outside is going to look like. Um, when Dad does the other one, I'll show you kind of how we ended up getting this and the template we used. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's going to live right there. Uh, you can see here we put the wheel and tire back on just to check it. And I'll full again. I remember this is going to when the suspension travels up, it's going to move out a little bit. But we've still got clearance there. Should be fine. And that is with this stock wheel and tire like this so he'll just have to kind of think about it when he changes his wheels and tires uh, in the future but yeah that's going to stiffen this up so we have this plate here we're going to make gussets and stuff like over there in this one as well and then we're going to make plate for the top and one for the bottom and this should be way overkill for anything that we're going to do or, or it's going to be should be way overkill for this and it should keep it really structured and safe. So we do have a metal brake, uh, but this one inch or this one eighth inch stuff is way too heavy for it um, to, to actually bend. So uh, we got our template here. Dad made this. Uh, it works on both sides. So you saw the one piece over there. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the other side. But I want to show you guys how we ended up having to, or how he ended up having to bend this so it'll fit properly. So we got this in the vise. He's got a, a piece with a nice radius on it here. So it'll help with the bend. He has our lines drawn here. We'll get that leveled up. Get that leveled up there. So that line ends up right in the middle of that bend. And you can clamp down on the vise. And then he's actually just gonna hit it with that big dead blow hammer. Now you can see that guy ends up being just like that, which is exactly what our template is. Okay, this held up. There you go. There you go. So that's how it'll be. Now that can go on the other side. Just like that. So, I actually missed her bend a little bit there, did he? But anyway, we can hammer that and get it get it roughed in a little better maybe. Oh there we go. Oh it was just against that weld. Yeah. We're good.
right after a ton of welding and hammering and all that stuff we've got the structure built up on both sides in the back here and that is going to be just super super rigid you can see it reaches around here to the front so it's got these pieces of frame acting as one now those are all welded up uh, we've are also got the side plates on both sides tacked in those look really good and the only two that are the only technically four things that we've got left are the two bottom plates here and the two top plates we're kind of saving the top plates for last because they're going to be the easiest to get to so um we'll kind of save the easier stuff for last there uh, but dad's already been working on this piece he's been marking fitting i've been sawing and then uh coming back and doing it again so you can see already this one is a uh, already a pretty complicated piece just like the rest of these kind of have been too but i think this thing's going to be super rigid whenever we get done with it we're back this morning uh getting ready to finish this thing up should be able to wrap this thing up uh today uh it would be really cool if we can get that thing on the ground we'll see what this looks like should set basically how it did which was way too high <laughs> um but hopefully we can uh uh hopefully we can get it down on the floor today the only thing we've got left is making uh, finishing up the, the bottom plate over on the passenger side and then finishing up then actually cutting and finishing up the one on the driver's side and then the two top plates and that's all we are so i'll show you again real quick kind of where we stand on everything there's the side plates over here on the outside you can see the structure built here on the inside and that is done on both sides now of course all this stuff's going to get welded up completely it's just tacked in um well most of this is welded up solid but the side plates and everything that's going to get uh, that's just tacked in they'll get welded in and like i said we'll get these plates done but we are really close to having this thing uh on the floor and like i said hopefully here in a few minutes we'll get to see it all right so we got to look at this thing after we'd got the side plates on it we built that really big rigid structure triangulated structure back here and i'll show that all to you guys again you can see all of this this rigid structure triangulated structure here this plate this plate here runs down the length of this ties that frame rail to this frame rail uh, and then the S plate itself does the same thing gives all this surface area here and attaches both of these up here This is way more rigid <clears throat> Than it's going to need to be uh, and so because of that we believe that the top and the bottom plates are actually just going to be in a redundance and it wasn't and it's not really going to be necessary it's not going to add enough to it uh, to actually put those in so we're going to set this thing in the floor and check it out um, but this is going to be way more rigid than even the original frame ever was or the s10 frame that we put on this thing let's put it in the floor and check it out so you can see here it is already starting to jack up the frame you can see there was literally no movement at all here in this section oh yeah that's extremely extremely solid which is exactly what we were expecting as we picked this thing up oh man She's that is stiff. so rigid She's stiff. that's so rigid those triangulations back there in the back are doing so much are doing doing so so much to hold all this together Looks good. You can see here it's back on the floor and you, uh, we told you guys at one point our goal was to have this thing sitting about the same as it was or maybe just a touch higher in the front. That The reason behind that is with the S10 you can buy drop spindles, lowering springs, you can do different things to get the front end down. Uh, they're, and they're readily available, easily easy to get. So that's what we've got. Front end of the car is actually sitting just a little high in the front, not by much. I would say it probably hasn't changed that much. The tire's about a half inch taller in the front than it is in the back. So I would say that with what was on this car when it came in, it's sitting about the same, just a touch high in the front. This is a really rigid suspension. <laughs> I got in it and stood kind of where the motor was, uh, where the motor will mount, and there's not a bunch of movement there. There's some really stiff springs in this thing. Um, we should work really well. This whole piece here, <laughs> even with us in it, we got out of here on the front of the frame and jumped on it. It is super, super, super rigid. 
um, those gussets and that triangulation is doing exactly what we said it would. Uh, and it's just, man, while this isn't like a plug and play solution, I would say, as far as it took us quite a bit of work to measure it, get the wheelbase right and all that stuff, maybe didn't fall in place as easily as maybe some things out there. This is going to function really well, we think. Uh, and the parts and pieces for the S10 being readily available, he can kind of do what all he need, whatever he needs to to get this thing going on the front end wise. Um, yeah, but it turned out really good, and I think it has made a big improvement over what was there. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap us up this week. Uh, we're really happy with how this turned out. Uh, we're hoping that Keith's happy. He'll be here in a few minutes to check it out. But to be honest, the work's just kind of getting started on this thing. It's going back to him, and he's going to go back into it. He's going to get the front sheet metal figured out. He's going to get all that stuff. He'll have to get the radiator um, cradle and everything put in. So there's still quite a bit of work to be done on this car on top of the actual restoration to get it running and everything on top of all that. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of see how that goes for him and how uh, it's going to turn out in the end. We really appreciate everybody that's been watching. Hope you guys learned something, you enjoyed this. And if you did, click that subscribe button. It really helps us out a bunch. Tune in each week. We're putting up one every single Friday, 6.30. We haven't missed one all year so far. <laughs> that was a goal of mine to kind of get through this year without missing anything. Um, so I'm really happy with that. Click the subscribe button. Follow us on social media. I put up stuff every day. I was putting stuff up about this as we went along with it. So you kind of get a little bit live, more live feel of what we've got going on. We really appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week.